When using functions for reporting, um, there's a, a few tips I can give you from personal experience. First of all, start off with something very simple in a report query. So I want to find out what dates there are in the orders table. I use my view to, um, to get that data, selecting the order dates. Now, I, once I have that query working, I add on to it. I don't delete it, I just add on. So I take the same data, and in this case I'll add a function, the year function. I'll use a column alias to show the order year, and now I have the years um, from the data. And let's face it, it's actually a little bit easier to see than 480 rows of data. I now can see that there's been three years that things have been ordered. I want to get some more information out, so I start adding on to it. I have the year, but I want the sum of the quantity during that time. So I'll join it to the order deta details table, and I'll have to use a group by because when I use an aggregate function like sum, any columns that are not part of an aggregate function have to be included in the group by. You cannot use the column alias. and for that reason, I actually have to use the function down here in the group by. And now I have something that's actually useful. I can see the number of sales over time. Looks like I'd use a looks like I could use a order by clause in there, but I'll be getting to that. The important thing to note is that I'm doing it in a progression. I start off small. I add some functions, I add some more, and I just keep doing so. I do not delete the original statement. I copy and paste and add on to it. That way, if I get up and go to um, take a lunch, or maybe I go home and I come back the next day, I have a nice little bread trail, breadcrumb trail I can follow to all the steps that got me there. And as you start writing more and more complex code, you will find that this is an invaluable technique. Speaking of complexity, let's add some more. So here's a function that's uh, pretty handy. It's the lag function. There's also a lead function. And what it does is it shows you a previous value. So it was in 1996, we had 78, no, 7,800,000. Then <clears throat> later on, we had 200, uh, 2 million. Uh, two million or two billion? Uh, two billion. So, um, you know, a big change here. But I wanted to do a comparison. So I can use the lead function to put the values here. The syntax is where do you want to start from? What do you want? Actually, what do you want to display? The quantity, some of the quantity. And where do you want to get it from? So that's uh, I order by year in the group by statement. I order by year here. So that's uh, it's an odd little syntax, but it works really well. And now you can see the previous values are available for me in my reports. Now, if I keep going, I can um, do other things such as go through and add on, let's say, the product breakdown. So I add in product name up here. I need to put it down here in the group by. I also need to put it here in the order by of the over clause. And I've added on the is null function, so I don't just end up with a null value. Combined, I have a much nicer report. Now I've got the breakdown per product per year and what it was the previous year. And an additional detail I think I'd like to have is wrapping that code up into a view. I think um, that since I'm going to be using this, it would be good to include it in a view, so I just make it. Now, one of the reasons why I use a view and not just a user-defined function is because a lot of software um, can't see the user-defined functions. So for example, if I connect to Excel, I can see tables, I can see views, 
but I can't see functions or stored procedures. I know that they exist in some of these databases, but the view show up, the table show up, the functions and stored procedures do not. Now, it's not like I can't configure Excel kind of sneakily to make the functions and stored procedures work, but it's not direct and certainly without uh, some training, um, your coworkers will not be able to. So using a view is, is usually uh, a better choice for something like this as well. Of course, I can use functions within it. That's perfectly fine. So if I switch over to here and I pull up that uh, products order year quantity, I can see that. I can go forward and I can use it in my Excel. I can also uh, do something with uh, Microsoft's reporting server uh, report builder tool. Once again, I can see the views here. If I go back and I change to a different database, oops, let's go to eight. I can see tables and views and stored procedures. So, but I can't see the functions. I can't see the, the user defined functions, which um, is somewhat unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. Excel, of course, came first, and uh, SQL Server Reporting Server Report Builder software, that's what we're looking at now, came afterwards. Uh, lately, Microsoft has been devoting most of their attention on to working with um, Power BI. And in Power BI, we actually start seeing the function show up. So I can, I can, oops, let me, uh, play. I can actually start using functions here. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Um, and of course, I can see stored procedures as well and work with those. But um, not all software works that way. Uh, Tableau is kind of finicky. And if you, every, um, the, the Power BI uh, desktop and the Report Builder is uh, free software you can get from Microsoft, but the uh, free version of Tableau uh, doesn't even connect to SQL Server. It can connect to file, it can connect to access, but they're really limited about which they allow you to connect to. So anyway, it um, it's something to think about. So it's just another reason why I kind of recommend when you make your functions, you get them up and working, you may want to use those functions um, and wrap them up in a view for reporting purposes. You know, once I have it in a view, I can actually use that view um, without having to, you know, show a lot of those functions. It obscures that, it abstracts that, all those function calls. It's still there. And if I want to, I can actually go through and modify. I thought I fixed that zero. Oh, it looks like I took out the... Um, the is null function. If I want to, I can go through and, and modify the result by adding on more features, like here, this, this case statement, which uh, allows me to create a key performance indicator. Key performance indicators um, will uh, make it easier for me to spot whether something is greater than, less than, or equal to by just giving a, a numeric value. The uh, industry standard is to go through and use negative one, um, zero, and positive one to represent the bell curve. So I have negative one, I have positive one, and I have zero. And then other choices would be a negative 0.5 or positive five, oh, 0.5, excuse me. So those would be the the, the choices that I would use typically on this, you don't have to use those, but that's a standard. So if it's positive, in other words, my current year is better than the previous year, and I think that's a good thing, I put a one. And now instead of having to kind of fumble with these numbers, I can easily say, yes, that was better, this was not, this was not, this was not, this was, uh, that was better, better. And if there's ever a time where I have a, like a, a zero on here, I don't think there is, but if I if there was a time in there, uh, then of course it would be mean that they were equal to each other. 
I can add on to it. Like I said, the is null. I'm going to go ahead and use that again. Maybe that's why I took it out previously. Uh, so that I can actually replace it with nulls. Here's an example. And then um, in this case, uh, it didn't evaluate correctly because uh, it was null. And so I just put a, a zero on there for no change. Looks like I could probably use to adjust that. Don't like the way that looks. Let's see what it looks like at the end. Oh, I went ahead and put smiley faces in just for, I don't know, to be funny. So here we have, uh, if it's good, positive. If it's bad, negative, and so on. And if I ever had a, a straight equals, it would be a, just a, an open, like, oh my. That, um, of course, that's, you know, kind of something you could do. Most of the time what people will do is they'll take these values like, like this one. Take these result sets or run it. And they'll use it in a product like Excel. Or I could use, do this in Power BI as well. Or for that matter, Report Builder. Um, but with Excel, it's pretty easy to... to to do. If I go through and I change this KPI, I just go ahead and add some conditional formatting. It um, is pretty smart about this. It can go through and add on various different uh, formatting for it. So now I can see that my zero is a yellow and and then we have green for a round here for um, a positive number and a red uh, diamond for a uh, negative value. And of course you can, you can change things and you can even make your own custom icon sets. Lots of choices that you can get and uh, you can configure it. So that's a key performance indicator. Um, very, very handy. It certainly uh, makes it a large table of numbers much easier to, to work with. Next thing I want to talk about is um, this um, working with um, functions for ETL processing. Uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and end this video and we'll get on to that one.